All right, hello again, everybody. I'm Rick Sanchez. As we begin tonight, I want you to take a look at some video, which really goes right to the heart of the matter here. This woman's talking to one of our correspondents. She's wondering why her bank suddenly has shut down when she realizes one of its doors may have opened. There's a commotion. She runs off in the middle of the interview. Now, what we're talking about tonight may end up being one of the biggest bank failures in U.S. history as we watch that again. California-based IndyMac has been taken over by the feds, leaving customers without full access to their money until at least Monday. We have quite a bit of our, um, our funds there, both my wife and I and my mom. So um, I knew the headquarters was down here, so I, I rushed down here and uh, now they're closed. It is disconcerting that um, you believe that your bank is very strong. Disconcerting. Well, regulators say that most depositors are going to be fine because of up to $100,000 of each account holder is insured by the FDIC. However, about 10,000 people will lose money, up to $500 million worth, according to federal regulators. So how did this even happen in the first place? It happened because this bank was giving mortgages to people with little or no income, nor assets. It just figured the value of the home that they were getting a mortgage for would go up. It didn't. And then crash. I want to begin with personal finance editor Susie Orman and the idea that our government allowed this practice to continue and didn't stop it until it was too late. Are you joking with me? Like this is a revelation that this has just happened. This has been happening for a long time. I mean, if you think about it, do you know where IndyMac came from? Do you know in 1985 they were part of Countrywide? Do you know that, Rick? Mm, no. And you know for and the reason that they became part of Countrywide is that back then Countrywide was giving large loans out that they could not sell to Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac. So they created this bank called IndyMac. They came together that way. And then in 1997, they were so successful, they spun them off to be their own entity. This has been going on for a long time. It's not just IndyMac. But it what was you Countrywide. Just, but, but, it was everything. Why what, wasn't anybody watching any of these people? What you just described is probably best described with the word irresponsible. Oh, it, you're being nice. But, Susie, shouldn't somebody in the government have been watching to make sure that this type of activity didn't take place? Sure, they should have been watching. They should have been watching for a long time. But, you know, they were kind of watching like... Oh, I see it. I don't see it. Why didn't they want to see it? They didn't want to see it, in my opinion, because they were making so much money. The banks were making money. The banks were selling these loans that were no good. They didn't have to worry about it to the securities companies. They were selling it to investors. Hmm. Everybody was making money and everybody was thriving, which made the economy look like it was thriving, which made the administration look good. Everybody was so happy, except those who should have been watching now they're kind of crying about it and rick it's really a shame you know everybody got mad at the enron people the worldcom people we took them to jail we did all this i don't know i don't understand why the people that should have been watching and weren't watching and allowed this to happen aren't going to jail as well if you ask me well who, are there agencies that do this uh, who is it in the government that by the way just to go ahead and call them on it what's the agency that's supposed to be checking these guys we have the office of thrift savings the ots which is supposed to look at how is everything doing where were they when all this was going on let's look at this from a micro standpoint my wife and I wake up this morning and we're reading these headlines this morning and we're wondering oh my goodness uh, with all the money that we have in these different accounts and these different funds and the IRAs and the kids college funds is it possible that we could somehow be affected by something like this and I bet you we weren't the only ones asking that question today well you should be asking questions when you say you have money in funds when you have money in retirement retirement when you have money for your kids you should be asking not the question is your institution safe you should be asking are the investments that my money is invested in are those funds safe are they going down is the stock market going down you know how much time do I have to have everything recover what we're talking about here that you have seen happen yesterday today what you see happening with Freddie Mac with all these things those are stocks with Indy Mac Bank that was a bank. It's where people put savings. Mm. They had their money there. What we're talking about is when a bank goes under, is your money protected? Is it not? And if you have less than $100,000 in there, yeah, you're going to be protected. But there were 10000 
thousand people that had more than a hundred thousand dollars in a bank that has been in the news for a long time this is just no secret that this just happened overnight this has been going on for a long time with this financial institution so the, 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 so i have to say what were they thinking all right, let, let's leave the conversation there. We're going to pick it up again because there's this part of the story as well. If the government has to bail out this bank, well, where's that money going to be coming from? And how much of it is coming from us? And vis-a-vis, -vis, how much is it going to cost you? And how much is it going to cost me in the future? Will the banks now increase their fees because they all have to come together to pay this off? Susie's going to explain this to us in, in just a little bit. That's another part of the story. But first, uh, we're learning as many as 90 other institutions may also be in some kind of trouble. Uh, and as you hear that, you're probably asking yourself, as I say it to you, well, heck, is my money safe right now, right? Freddie Mac stocks down. Fannie Mae stocks down. Let's bring in our senior business correspondent, Ali Velshi. Um, Ali, thanks for joining us. Let's talk about the immediate pain first, my friend. Tell us who is going to get hurt by this. I mean, the guys who are going to get hurt by this right now. All right. Well, there are, there are a few people getting hurt. One is that the stock of IndyMac was we hit twenty eight cents after declining for a whole year. So anybody who invested in it uh, would have seen that pain. But we're talking about people. Susie brought up a good point. We're talking about people who had investments. If you had more than a hundred thousand dollars in a bank account or two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in an IRA, you're a responsible investor. You've been saving all that money. The last thing you expect is that that money in a bank account is going to be at risk. But that's exactly what it is. There are ten thousand people who had more money up to 10,000 people who had more money in IndyMac in a deposit account than is insured by the federal government. Hmm. They are going to get the first 100,000 back plus half of the, the, the remainder. So if you had $150,000, you get 100 plus 25,000, half of the extra 50,000. The remainder you might get if the government is able to sell that bank uh, for a good enough amount of money. So people who are being responsible and just saving their money, not risking it, uh, in, in risky investments are going to be the losers. That is what I think has people worried, like you and your wife were talking about. Is my money safe even if I'm not being risky? Hey, by the way, we're hearing that this was essentially a, a run on a bank. And by the way, those words, run on a bank, make a lot of people from a historic sure. standpoint, a lot of old folks get a real, real frightened about what's going on. But and, and that it was caused by Senator Schumer's comments. Can, yeah. you, can you put the reconcile that? Put I'll those give two you, together I'll give you the the storyline, uh, and I think it's a bit of a cop-out to call it Senator Schumer, but we heard that comment uh, yesterday. Here's what happened. On June 26, Senator Schumer had sent a letter to regulators, federal regulators and California regulators, to say he's very concerned about IndyMac's balance sheet. Uh, they had had severe losses because they'd been giving loans, uh, these no-income, no-job, uh, no-asset verification needed loans, to people where they thought the property value would go up. And he said... I'm fearful that if people, I'm paraphrasing here, I'm fearful that if depositors decide to take their money out of this account, it won't survive. Well, you know what? Word of that, those comments got out, and investors took out $1.3 billion from IndyMac, and by Tuesday, IndyMac had to report to the federal regulators, the Office of Thrift Supervision that Susie was talking about, that we are no longer well capitalized. That's a run. And that was the run. That yeah. was it. People went in. But, I mean, I, I don't, I feel that if, if, a, if a United States senator's comments about concerns about a bank's financial health 12 months after the rest of us knew that that bank was in financial problems if, if that's what caused a bank to fail I think the bank was in trouble I'm not sure that we can we can pin that on on Chuck Schumer but, but here's the danger Rick there are I think you mentioned this there are 90 banks on the on the FDI yeah and we're down uh, to ten, we're down to about know, 10 or 15 seconds can you just yeah. can you button that up for us? Yeah, there's who 90, are there's, these other banks well, they won't tell us because they're concerned that if we publicize those names those people will will have a run on their banks causing more banks to fail CNN is working on getting uh, some sense of who those banks are. They're probably not the major banks, but there are banks that are in trouble, and the FDIC is watching that. It's not a need to panic. Just make sure you don't have more than $100,000 in a deposit yeah. account, as Susie said. Ollie Velshi, author of Get Rich, Sleep Well, and our guy when it comes to finances as well. Hey, Ollie, thanks so much. We'll, uh, a pleasure. we'll be talking to you again. Busted Bank IndyMac, the only one? No. As we said, as you just heard Ali said, 90 other institutions out there may be in trouble. Personal finance expert Lynette Calfani Cox is going to be telling us whether uh, we should be worried about this. If this were a dictatorship, it'd be a heck of a lot easier. <laughs> just so long as I'm the dictator. <laughs>